that currently is in um, the Corvallis, the art center in Corvallis. It is a show called On to New Horizons. Um, we, when we were planning this, we thought we would be further ahead in our COVID adventures, uh, but we're still in the middle of it, so it's maybe a little premature. But then again, you can be at home and still think about New Horizons. All in all, it is a very optimistic show, which is great. And we have asked three artists to uh, talk a little bit about their work. Anna Silvestri is new to this community, so maybe you haven't heard her name that much. She um, submitted five paintings, and I don't know if that is called a quantic or uh, something like that. But anyway, it is uh, five paintings that are strongly related, and she will talk about it a little bit later. And then Joan Lindsay, um, a glass artist, submitted some glass work with also some collage and some prints, and she will talk about the new concept that she has been uh, pursuing with this. And then Jeff Gunn, who is very well known as a ceramicist, or also known as Potter, <laughs> um, who started painting. So here we go. I'm going to go to my questionable spot. Questionable. Mm -hmm. questionable. Okay, Anna, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what makes you an artist. Um, my name is Anna Silvestri, and what makes me an artist? Well, I'm actually self-taught, and it's just kind of been something that um, I've been doing for, you know, as long as I can remember. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, oh, you're so good at art, you know, you should really think about, you know, going to school for it, and I just never really did. And um, this was actually the first time I've actually submitted my art into anything formal at all. Uh, thank you. Good job. <laughs> thank you. Um, I didn't quite remember what was the middle question that you asked me. A little bit more about myself. Um, yeah, I'm actually, you know, from, you know, Louisiana. I was um, born in a little city called Slidell. It's about, you know, 20 miles away from New Orleans. Um, and, you know, I kind of stumbled upon Corvallis and I just fell in love with it. And, you know, finding out that it was, you know, so, I'm sorry? <laughs> just finding out that it was so, you know, art driven, really, you know, it really fit for me. And, you know, it kind of just felt like home. To make a drive you know to to get here to move all of my stuff and it really is a new horizon for me you know um it's about two thousand miles to get from here back home and we already made the drive and it was just you know halfway through the drive i just you know saw the horizon of you know utah and wyoming and it just it really felt like you know this is what was supposed to happen so, Joan, um, you have an entirely different, um, 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 you have an entirely different new horizon. You've been here in Corvallis for a while. You were known as mostly as a glass artist, but you're working on a medium too. So, tell us a little bit why would you submit to uh, an exhibit called New Horizon, on to New Horizon? Well, I um, well, first of all, Joan, I'm Joan Lindsay, and um, I was going to talk a little bit about why I'm an artist first, because to me that is significant in my life. My father was an artist and a poet, and I grew up with that. But he was also a sheet metal designer. He worked for a living to raise his kids, but his passion was art, and I always figured I'd be an artist. Right. You know, grew up. I, I played alongside him, and and 
and so I became a drafts person, which was the closest thing I could get to a paying job as an artist, and went to work with um, an engineering company with left brain engineers. <laughs> um, I, uh, that's kind of my, my flow into art, and then um, to really address your question, am I, am I talking loudly enough? I gotta this get closer. Is, this is slightly better. Okay, good. Um, anyway, I, um, New Horizons, uh, it just, uh, it was a call to artists, I yeah. think in general. I don't think this was a jury. And so I just, this work that I'm doing is this new work um, that has been inspiring me to, um, it's a new horizon in itself to, to start new work. And so it's, it's, I can explain that a little bit more later, but that's what, why I submitted work to the show. Because you were embarking on a new, on a new technique. Concept. It's a new concept, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called no-tan, which is, well. No-tan? No-tan, it's a Japanese term for, uh, it's a concept, it's a, it's a design concept using uh, light and dark and, um, I actually brought a visual aid that I can show in a little while okay. to explain okay. it a little more better. Let, let's, uh, let's have Jeff uh, respond. I think it's to, you can pull the, the, the link to the notes for the past. So. Uh, Jeff, why is a Potter painting? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so a little bit of background. Uh, I have to I have to go way back. Uh, being a, a <laughs> science teacher uh, <laughs> of, of, a, of, of middle of middle school kids, uh, at one point I, I really needed some uh, therapy, and so I decided to take uh, a ceramics class at OSU, and uh, that led to uh, an addiction to clay. Um, my sister's a painter. Uh, she introduced me to. Um, that world of paint. She said, Jeff, uh, we're going to Japan and uh, I want you to bring uh, a travel uh, kit of watercolors and uh, we're going to sketch and mess around with colors. And so I got a taste of it then. Uh, went, took some classes uh, at uh, Sitka College Center, OSA, um, and I tra I'm transitioning now to painting. And to go to your question, why? Um, if you think about, uh, there are so many common threads with, between the two, mainly the creative process, um, trying to be unique and original, and, and uh, it's, it, all that's so rewarding. But if you think about ceramics and the number of steps that are involved um, to get to the finished piece, compare that to painting, um, and it, there's, there's a huge difference. Uh, uh, if you think about the finished product in, in uh, ceramics, um, there's not a whole lot of tweaking you can do. Uh, you can refire, but if you think about painting, oh my goodness, uh, I'm just going to gesso over this painting and I'm going to start again, or add another layer, and I can do that in a very short period of time. So um, that along with some simple things like uh, the physical aspects of ceramics versus painting, brush on canvas, versus all the other stuff, stuff you have to do with, with uh, ceramic work. Um, and then some little things like storage, storing paintings, so much easier than storing uh, ceramics. And then of course there's uh, the health issue in a, in a studio where there's clay, clay dust, silica, compared to painting where that's eliminated. And then the space needed, okay, so, you can see how the transition is is um, it's, it's easy to move from ceramics yeah. to painting, but I'm I'm totally attracted and drawn to both equally. Okay, okay. Here, yeah. Uh, so we, we just should. you don't have to frame ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say. Right. Yeah. A disadvantage. We just showed the cross up on our car, which has the verb by Jeff. And how would you say your painting relates to the imagery that you've been using on your pots? Because you've been painting on your pots too. 
Absolutely. And, and so, um, in, in my mind, it, it's um, the, the process is, is quite different for me in painting in that um, I, I don't have a lot of intention initially. There's some, but um, I'm responding to the paint, painting as I, as I move through it, as I put brush marks on. Um, and so clay, clay was a little bit like that. Um, uh, so what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, sure. Now, you can sure. That it's sure. Sure. Well, uh, you know, I can go go right to the uh, the figures that are on my painting, and how um, there's some unknowns with those figures uh, in terms of gender. I mean, it seems like it's they're, they're female, but there's an unknown, and what they're doing there's an unknown. So that mystery aspect um, is, I think, relevant, and it's common. There's a common thread between the clay and the painting. And then that spirit of being positive, um, I think that comes through, maybe some calmness uh, comes through with both my brushwork on the clay and brushwork um, on the painting that's here. How, how do you determine the subject matter? Was this painting something you read and you thought, oh, that's it? Or did you think? Oh, I, you know, oh. I, just, I just know without the intention, I, I just know um, my painting, uh, so what's surfacing in my painting relates to a lot of things with clay. One, one obvious would be shape, texture, pattern, and um, imagery that I, I think I get from, from going back to several things, nature, traveling, uh, my outdoor activities. Um, that, so that, that's definitely part of that, uh, that inspiration piece. So um, we're going back to uh, Joan, who uh, said that she would be able to show us some example of no tag. Yes, no tag. So I would like to mention that both Joan and Jeff were featured. Uh, we just showed the postcards with Jeff work on it, and Joan has the smallest piece in the in the uh, show, but it is uh, blown up as a big advertisement it's an outdoor banner and it stands up. Good job, Joe. Huh? Uh, so tell us a little bit, you mentioned no tech? No tan, N-O-T, -E, like, <clears throat> like uh, living in Oregon, you basically don't get a tan, so no, no, no tan. tan. Okay, good. There's not a lot of sun here. Uh, so yeah, I, the piece, it's interesting because the piece outside is massive. I mean, it's, what is that? I mean, it's probably three by five. Three by four. Four, yeah. And it's, it looks huge. And it, and it interpreted itself pretty well, starting from about a four by four square. This is actually what I started with when I did the design. <clears throat> I'll speak a little closer. So my, my visual aid is that square, basically, and then, and um, yeah, I can, I can do it. I can, I can hold it closer to it. Oh, so I was going to, um, yeah, that started that size, which is kind of amazing um, in a way. Yeah. And uh, I, I created this visual aid to, sh to really illustrate as like a teacher might do, I suppose. So what I did is I cut out the sections of it and flipped it over, getting that, oh, yeah, it's kind of cool, getting the, uh, so that's how you get the positive and the negative. Yes, because yes. if you say light and dark, that is what Renoir did as well, but he has it all like yes. soft and whatnot, but you have very sharp lines. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it looks like a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and you get the um, basically the values of light and dark in doing something like this. And you can make it as intricate as you like, or as simple as you like. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps understand 
Because if I tried to explain that, it would be a little... The visual help. Visual aid, I like that. I know, that's helpful. Okay. So, I hope that answers a little... Let's see. So how did you get to get to do this? How did you... Well, so I started talking about my life, my, my journey as an artist. I, um, yeah, I, I went to work to make, you know, a living to raise a family, but I also kept working in art as I, through the years, and, um, I went, I go, I make it a point, actually, to go to, to, uh, workshops every year. And so I went to a workshop, and, uh, this is where this concept came across, and, um, yeah, that, that was this year, recent, okay. so the New Horizon, I suppose, but as far as an allegory to this show, I had to think about that a little bit, and you guys did select that picture for your banner, and I thought, well, it kind of looks like a New Horizon. It does. It sort of looks like that. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was exciting, and I didn't, I didn't yeah. expect that at all, but that's pretty, pretty yeah. fun. So, and, uh, you depicted uh, your client paintings starting to be read from left to right, showing five moments of your trip from Louisiana to Corvallis. Every time, the image gets smaller in comparison with the frame. The frame size remains the same. It's quite unique. Um, the people that selected work, looked at work, very interested in how you thought about it. So there is a horizon, and the interesting thing is that the horizon remains on the same level. So how did you think this up? <laughs> well, um, originally it was supposed to have all the canvases behind the largest canvas. Um, I actually had someone convince me out of it to keep them separate and not to cut the canvases because it would kind of, they thought it would ruin the piece itself. Um, however, I kept it level by actually using a level and I put the canvases behind the largest one and I actually just took a pencil and poked through the canvas to make sure that I had my central point on it. Um, so I, I mean, it, were you really asking about how I came to the sizes of each canvases as well? <laughs> well, you know, it's such a unique piece and it has so many different elements in it. There are the design elements of how you presented the work, but also why start big in Louisiana and end the Louisiana is maybe uh, 18 by 24 or something. Yes. And uh, for Dallas is uh, four, four by four. four. Yeah. yeah. And so, is there a meaning behind that? Oh, most, most definitely. So it's really supposed to represent to you know people of Oregon or Corvallis that it's how I viewed Corvallis from so far away. It, it's so small because it's to be an ode to how it's a daydream constantly for five years mm -hmm. to be in Corvallis. And it, I mean, it's so small and it's not supposed to represent, you know, anything of insignificance at all. It's just, it's something that was just in my mind and I constantly had to refer to, you know, two years ago being in Corvallis. You know, I never really came to visit much, but I always wanted to come back and I wanted to live here and so desperately. And to kind of have the size of, you know, Louisiana was really to represent, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of just in your face. I mean, it's that are kind of disturbing to me, and that's why it's kind of painted in that light for Louisiana. There's just so much that happens on a day-to-day -day basis where um, a lot of people just don't acknowledge it. And so, you know. so can you describe, instead of me doing that, mm -hmm. can you describe what the images are? Oh, yeah, um, so on the far left, um, there's a depiction actually of a um, interstate crash with a semi. It was 
pretty much in a lot of the news locally and a little bit nationally. Um, since about 2014, there were so many accidents that occurred on this interstate. Um, I also had a, um, a brother who was in high school at the time and would actually travel on this interstate. And, um, you know, within, you know, where he had to get off to school, you know, I was constantly hearing about those accidents. And it was just kind of troubling to hear, you know, that. So do I read it correctly if I say this is sort of apocalyptic? The sky is gray. Yeah, it's yellow. It's actually, um, it, the sky is supposed to be a hurricane from, oh, from, that's from the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and also the top left actually is, um, it's a cabbage and lemons. Um, they're actually rotting because it's to depict, you know, you know, after a storm, you have to kind of deal with kind of the, the rot, you know, and yeah. I mean, to be, th this wasn't very, you know, in, in a very good light, I think for, you know, on New Horizons, it was just kind of a, you know, really stark comparison to, you know, what, where I would love to live versus what I felt like I was living with. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, looking at it now, I was wondering whether or not it was, you know, positive enough or on to new horizons, but, you know, I was really happy that it yeah. still could be a part of it. And, and could you describe the subsequent uh, images? Oh, yes. Um, so the second one is um, Texas. Really, I mean, they're just really landscapes of Texas, uh, Wyoming. There are some very small um, windmills um, kind of in the hills. And Utah, uh, Utah and Colorado kind of look the same towards, you know, the same state line. Um, but it that does not do it justice. This is all from dash cam <laughs> that I had from my drive to uh, Corvallis. But, you know... I thought, you know, that was my favorite part of the drive right before it, yeah. you know, the anticipation of being in Oregon. Yeah. Um, there, there, so Louisiana is, is a hurricane, Texas, and uh, you said Utah or Wyoming? Wyoming, yes. They, they already have blue skies and mm -hmm. clouds and uh, rise very far away. And then uh, the fourth one mm -hmm. is, what, what was that again? That one is, uh, I'm going to say it's um, Utah. Utah? Utah. Yeah. And rock formations. Mm -hmm. and, and so what were you trying to say in those five paintings, those five moments in these five years? Well, it was just kind of a recognition of like moments in time of when, you know, I stopped to reflect of what my end goal was, you know, through all of the things that, you know, my fiance and I have been through, what was the end goal for all of it? Right. You know, you know, it was to be in Corvallis. And uh, I'm going to totally switch. Mm -hmm. um, it's acrylic, right? It's, yes. It's acrylic paint on, on panel. Uh, it is on canvas. Um, I use panels to kind of secure them into place. Okay. Uh, well, I just want to I just want to say that the concept of the journey you get that really well from mm -hmm. the five panels, and Thank you. I think that was an effective way to portray that. And mm -hmm. just having it's kind of fun to think of Corvallis as a destination in that way because I always say. Corvallis is not a destination city, <laughs> but it really is for some people. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people look at the size, there's a college here, and they say, that's where we're going. This is it, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, as Cynthia said, it, it gives that, that travel uh, very well. So can you tell us a little bit about how you came to the decision of change, keeping your frames the same and yet changing them one by one. Well, originally it kind of was how to suit our needs. Um, I worked with my dad, who's a carpenter. Um, he actually does that. That's his, you know, artistic uh, medium, I would say. 
um, it was originally to make it kind of like a shadow box mm -hmm. to where they would stack on each other so it would fit properly. But then we'd realize, you know, six inches, that's just way too thick to be held on a wall. So you know, we kept it, you know, in those original frames that we would have adhered together. But we decided to veneer them to let them be standalones, you know. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think the presentation is such an important part of your work, which doesn't take anything away from the paintings itself, but it, it's the whole concept that I think you very effectively put together. And you said this is the first time that you're submitting to a art show? Yeah, I, yes. <laughs> is this going to be a lot? <laughs> Definitely not, no. no yes. I encourage you to do it again and again. I think uh, I think it's wonderful. Um, I s you sent us images where the, the frames were not there, mm -hmm. but you know, I think both have, have really good, uh, good art. Um, did you make this after you heard the concept of the show? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And how long did it take you? It took me two weeks. Believe it or not, oh. uh, it took me another week, though a full week of, you know, I would say maybe five to six hours every day to do just the frames. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it matters how long someone yeah. is working on it. And when I ask a question, I surprise myself. Um, when I was a guide in Amsterdam for a Rembrandt, uh, the night watch, everyone always ask me, how long does this take? And in your case, it took you two weeks. In your case, uh, uh, Jeff, it took you, uh, I don't know, uh, an afternoon, two afternoons, a week, whatever, um, plus all those years painting on fabric. And um, I think, Joan, that goes for you too, although you had a new concept. You had all that experience by daring to have a new concept. So, Anna, do you think you're going to continue painting? Uh, and now that you're here, you cannot collaborate with your dad. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was also kind of to represent the closing of being able to have the opportunity with my dad to frame or even, you know, make our own canvases. We had made one, um, made several together um and i think i might you know go off on my own to make my own canvases yeah, yeah. so um what what do you think you're going to do now in your art work well what's interesting is um i didn't really think painting was my medium i actually prefer pencil and you know charcoal and sometimes um pastels but i really do like pencil but i mean it's just more vibrant to paint so I'm not sure. I'm really interested to try, you know, workshops like you did mention to kind of yeah. see, because I really haven't found what I feel like is my medium quite yet. So I'm really interested to try and, you know, venture out into different types of mediums. You're trying. There's always a yeah, Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joan, well, my sense of it is that it all informs Every, everything, the, the work you do in charcoal, the work you do in paint, it's kind of this, a, a similar language in a way, and it informs. I did want to say something about the, the glass on the wall. So I started the no tan with paper, and my challenge was to do it in glass, which is always a little challenging, because uh, it's just a different medium. Um, so What's the, what is the big, big hurdle there? Uh, it's not very flexible glass, and we have to figure out also how to, you know, uh, treat it to put it on a wall. That's a little bit of a step. And uh, but but it it's an evolution. I think all of the art that I've done all these years is I evol it's evolving. Like you said, you you didn't know at first what you wanted to do with those frames, with those pictures, and it evolved. And I find that with almost everything I do, that it starts out as a concept and then it just changes. And it's like, aha, I, this is where I wanted to go with it. It's, it. it's a great process, I think. So, so are, you, process. are we going to see more no work from you? I, I love that. 
Well, I want to say I, I brought the more visual. Since you, since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping. Now, everything, I, I, almost everything, uh, I start seeing no town. This is a checkerboard. I'm like, that's what that is. I mean, and you see it uh, more visually, I think it opens, you know, one of the things of artists to, that we want to do is to really see. And so seeing things from a basic dark light um, is, is a way to open your eyes to what's really out in front of you. So, so how, how much is the percentage seeing versus doing? <laughs> That's a good question. It is because you you got to you, to do. You, you have to. He has an opinion. I know he. Of course. He's, he's of course he I'm gonna hand, I'm gonna hand this off because you're doing a good job of fielding these questions, Jeff. But also, um, you got to get into the studio. That's the starting place, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. You know, I'm so busy doing this. And I think like so many artists, uh, it, it would be wonderful if we could uh, really create what we imagine. It, there's, there's oftentimes a huge gap there, but um, going back to Notan, um, so recently, um, looking at uh, an app that will take an image and change it from colors to the, to the Notan um, look, so uh, I have messed around with three-dimensional pieces, lots of color, slips. Um, using that app to change that, and it is fascinating what tends to then be revealed in terms of shapes and texture. Uh, it's just, it's totally different than something I'm, I'm really drawn to. So, Joan, just, uh, that was just, I was just adding that on to the whole no, no, no tan thing. Is there a question that your whole town asked that I have not? <laughs> I know this is the weirdest question ever, but you, you have thought about this, so maybe there's something that didn't come up in our conversation that you would want to point out. I, I guess I have a question. Um, thank you, I'm a person. Um, the, the um, theme of this show, On to New Horizons, came, didn't come from the artists. We, we kind of tried to fit, I wanted to fit into the, you know, create something that was allegorical to the theme of On to New Horizons. How did that come up for you? So last year, and it's, we're still doing from COVID. <laughs> last year, we had our winter show, um, and COVID was only uh, eight months old or something. And we, for 2020, for a large period of time, we were uh, limited to our house. So we had an exhibit called Home Sweet Home, which could have been literally sweet home, or it could have been a sarcastic remark, and my home is now prison. <laughs> Surprisingly, it was a very optimistic show. Um, so we all felt collectively still positive about home. And then COVID sort of went away a little bit. And we were thinking about what are we going to do in, in June or July? We thought, what are we going to do in the winter of 2021 now? Well, we all will be able to travel wherever we want to and go out about and you know we're going to be free little did we know that that had to be a journey of the imagination mostly well i mean you travel but still <laughs> for most of us uh, and so we opened it up for people to to think about not just literally as Anna did, you know, a horizon, but also what you and Jeff did, I'm gonna try something new. And um, I think if you look at the show, it's pretty optimistic, uh, which I think is very nice that we still can think optimistically, although 
uh, COVID is still in our way. And so that is how that theme came about. Um, it was a little scary. I had a plan B, <laughs> but uh, no need. Um, so now that all the questions you wanted to be asked are asked, <laughs> I'm going to ask you your infamous last question. If money and space was not something you would have to think about, what artwork would you like to own and why? You look surprised, Jeff, but you've heard this question before. No, uh, no I'll, I'll go, go for this. Uh, so, uh, um, being drawn to abstract paintings with some realism sprinkled in there. Um, there are two artists that come to mind, Mike Bernard, and, uh, and he's working with acrylics and collage and inks. And then um, Kunt, uh, Gustav. Uh, yeah. uh, so if I could buy, if I could purchase the original, um, was it the eye? Uh, that's the hug. Anyway, so purchasing an original of his, uh, since money's no object, <laughs> and I'm sure I could outbid anybody else if money's no object, uh, that's, that's where I would land. That's great. Okay. Um, so, um, I um, have been, I've, I've always loved portraiture. I'm, I'm drawn to imagery of, uh, I actually participated in a, um, uh, not art for the heart. What was it? The um, arts alive. Arts alive, and I did caricature, which is a kind of portraiture. It's 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 a playful portraiture. But my the artist that I have really been drawn to that made a career of it. She was born in 1900. Is Alice Neal. Oh yeah. She goes deeper than just this, she goes into the emotional intensity, it's, as it's been stated, but you can see that. And, it, and it, it's just, I would love to have a piece of hers, especially her self-portrait, where she's sitting in her chair, completely naked at the age of, I think, as seven. an 80-year-old. Yes, woman. yes, yeah. with all of the, you know, <laughs> everything was just out there. It's, it's beautiful, it's a yeah. beautiful image of a, a soulful spirit, an artist. So Anna, you're probably not as familiar as these two with this uh, question, <laughs> which is harder to answer uh, than no, you think. Um, so are we talking about artists as a whole, like historically, anybody? anybody? Okay. Sissy Chapel, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well uh, yeah, this is a very difficult question because, I mean, I'm not very versed in, you know, a lot of art. I wish I, you know, probably should take a lot more, you know. You could, you could have, what one artist told me, I have the painting I want to own. It is by myself, <laughs> but it was a painting that he had given to his grandmother when he was five years old. Oh. And after his grandmother passed away, he found that she had kept it all that time. <laughs> Which I thought was a, a lovely, and you know, the first time, it sounds like, well, wow, he's full of himself. But it was really uh, that connection that he felt with his grandmother and, and her appreciation uh, of that work and, and feeling connected with that too. I am sure you will find something. And next time when you're uh, on the panel, <laughs> because you're going to say more here, um, you may be more securely prepared for right. uh, this question. And I would say, and you probably agree, it's not always the same. You know, next month it might be something different. And it could be very small. It could be, that is the lucky part of space and money is not an issue. But owning it means that you are willing to commit to it, that you're willing to live with it. Because that is what owning is about. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have any questions?
This, this is um, related to gratitude and appreciation, and, and first of all, for having the Arts Center in our community. Just wanted to put that out there, a little promotion, but, uh, and Hester, thank you very much for inviting right. us, but also I want to do a little shout out to, to my partner, Sarah, who is um, a painter, and she, I need to give her credit for my transition in so many ways, but one is her when she took her first class at Sitka, Sitka, she invited me. So we sat in a class together and um, I did my first painting class. And then to have a fellow artist slash painter in the studio, it's amazing the benefits, the perks that trickle down to both of us to have that. And I think our bonds are stronger um, because of that. A match made in heaven. <laughs> a match made in heaven. Yes. So I would like to thank you for your time and your thoughts and uh, being an artist and making artwork and doing that great step of actually exhibiting artwork, uh, which is a great step. And uh, I would invite the audience to come and see the show. Uh, the last day is December 22nd. I thought it was the 23rd, but we closed early due to holidays. So through the 22nd, come and see the show and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Yes. Uh.